So looking at page 21, the car on the freeway accelerates to, or according to, A equals 15 cosine pi times T, all right, where T is measured in hours. All right, so that's reasonable, I suppose. And so it's an oscillating acceleration. It's increasing, it's decreasing, you know. It's, um, now, I don't know anybody who particularly drives that way, at least in a consistent basis, but, you know, it's, as a hypothetical go, it seems reasonable. All right, so A is equal to, again, 15 cosine pi t. A is the same as dv dt. So I'm going to get this differential equation in differential form. dv is equal to 15 cosine pi t dt. Now I'm going to integrate both sides. That understood 1 in front of the dv becomes a v. And so if I anti-differentiate a cosine, it's going to become a negative sign. Alright. Oh, sorry. Apologies. It's going to become a positive sign. If I differentiate it, it's going to become a negative sign. Alright. So, 15 sine pi t. Now, if I were to take the derivative of this, it would become 15 sine pi t times the derivative on the inside, which is a pi. So I'd have an extra pi here, all right? So that's kind of an issue because I don't, in this case, want an extra pi, all right? There is a time and a place for extra pi. This is not it. So what I need to do is get rid of that pi and I can do that, or at least uh, correct for that pi, I should say. But, you know, nobody really wants to get rid of pi, at least not permanently. I'll correct for it. So, what I'll do is I'll just tack on a divisor of pi. So I'll make this 15 over pi. <laughs> which apparently looks just like the number 15, no, uh, 15 over pi, apologies, times the sine of t, sine of pi t, I should say, plus c. All right, now when you do the double check, you got 15 over pi, sine of pi t, multiplied by the derivative on the inside, which is pi, then the pi's cancel out, and you get what you, and you get what you need, although this should be a cosine. So, it took a while, you know, I made a couple of false starts there, but I got you there. All right, so now it's a matter of actually figuring out the velocity if the initial speed is 51, all right? So, that's saying that when time t equals zero, the velocity is 51 miles per hour, all right? Now, t is measured in hours, so we have no inconsistencies with the units for time. We are defining position to be measured now in miles based off of these units. All right, so v of t, v as a function of t, we know now is 15 over pi sine of pi t plus c, so v of zero is 15 over pi sine of pi times 0 plus c. All right, sine of 0, pi times 0 is 0. Sine of 0 is 0. All right, um, v of 0 ought to be 51. So 0 plus c is going to give us c is equal to 51, which means v of t is going to be 15 over pi times the sine of pi t plus 51. So variable acceleration 
implies variable velocity, so we're in good shape here. All right, I can get rid of this now. After 40 minutes of driving, all right, so now that our units of time are in hours, so 40 minutes, we know one hour is 60 minutes. Do a unit conversion. This is the same as saying two thirds minutes cancel. Two thirds times one is two thirds of an hour. All right, so two thirds is our measure of T. We want to know what our driver's velocity is going to be. So V of two thirds. So 15 over pi sine of pi times two thirds plus 51. All right, that's really the same as saying two pi over three. Sine of two pi over three, well, sine of pi over three is radical two, oh, radical three over two. So we're in the second quadrant where sine is also positive. So it's gonna be another radical three over two. All right, so a little unit circle action there. 15 over pi times radical three over two plus 51. And in terms of uh, cleaning this up, there's not much to be done here. 15 radical three over two pi plus 51. That's gonna be the velocity. Now, I don't know if it's the best idea in the world to leave it like that. It's, you know, the cop pulls you over and says, do you know how fast you were going? The quickest way to get asked to step out of the car would be to answer 15 radical three over two pi plus 51 miles per hour. All right, so let's uh, let's get a decimal value for that. All right. Also, recommendation: don't tell the cop a decimal value. Yeah, I was going approximately 78.125 miles per hour, sir. Can you please step out of the car? You know, you don't want that either. All right, so. Um, Okay, 15, Oop, that's not a 15, that's a five. 15 radical three over two pi plus 51. And we're looking at about 55.135 miles per hour. All right. So, yeah, I mean, you could say 55 miles an hour, approximately, all right? Now, if you wanted to, you could do all this prior to um, actually manipulating it algebra, well, I'll say um, numerically, by replacing y1 with a 15 over pi, so put it in general terms, all right? So 15, over pi. Just make sure you're in the right mode. That's a that's a standard rule of thumb anyway, but put an x here instead of a t plus 51. All right, and then quit out of here and just do alpha trace y1 open paren, that's how you evaluate in these ti's. Put in the 2 thirds and it'll crunch the numbers for you anyway. Once you recognize that you're going for a decimal value, uh, the calculator is going to be a pretty good ally. All right. Now it says find the expression for the distance the car has traveled. All right, so it's position. All right. So the SVT is the same as velocity. All right. So ds is v dt, the antiderivative of which would be s is equal to the antiderivative of v dt, since we know v is 15 over pi times the sine of pi t plus 51 dt then we can anti-differentiate this and then worry about the initial value in a sec. 
right. We anti-differentiate sine, we're going to get negative cosine. So we're going to hang on to the, fi uh, the 15 over pi. We're going to tack on a negative to account for the fact that sine becomes negative cosine through the anti-differentiation process. All right, so my pen decides to work. Um, so we're going to have that pi t. 51 is going to become a 51t. And then we're going to have a plus c. But again, when we differentiate a cosine of pi t, cosine pi t becomes, ne again, negative sine of pi t but then multiplied by the coefficient of t, which is pi. So to correct for that, we have to divide by another pi. All right, so this should be negative 15 over pi squared. All right, that's to avoid things like, uh, and we'll get to it in the next topic, but to avoid things like u substitution. All right, so this gives us s which again is the number of miles traveled over whatever period of time you're looking at. Now they tell us that the initial distance is zero, so when t is equal to zero, s of t is equal to zero. So s of t, so s of zero in this case, is going to be negative 15 over pi squared cosine of pi times zero plus 51 times 0 plus c. All right. So, you know, just because there's a 0, don't automatically make the assumption that everything's going to cancel out. Cosine of 0 is actually equal to a 1. So we're looking at negative 15 over pi squared plus c equals 0, which means that c is e actually equal to 15 over pi squared. So s of t is going to be the negative 15 over pi squared cosine of pi t plus 51t plus 15 over pi squared. All right. So then it's just a question of, all right, how long does it take for the car to travel if a hundred miles, almost at a thousand miles, a uh, hundred miles, that would be what you would get if you set this equal to 100. Which sounds like some fun algebra to do. All right, not necessary though. All right, so what we can do is we type in our equation here. Um, so let me just modify this. Negative power of 2, this is a cosine pi x plus 51 x plus 15 over pi squared and set that equal to 100. Now I need a, a pretty good window here in order to make this work. So I'm going to make sure that it definitely goes up as high as 100. I might even go higher. I'll go to 200. I don't know, 10, 10 hours long enough? I don't need negatives, probably, anyway. So let's take a look. Okay, looks like we got it coming on the upside, but let's see if, um, if it comes back down. Let me go out to 100 here. Yeah, it looks like if it's going to come down, it's not going to come down in a uh, short period of time. So we can kind of leave it back where it was. Second trace five. Enter to select the first curve. Enter to select the second curve. Since there's one, only one intersection on the screen, it's going to get dragged right to that intersection. So just hit enter a third time. And there you go. About 1.96 is t. So t is approximately 1.9. I'll go to the nearest uh, thousandth. All right, so 1.961 hours. All right, and very quickly, not too quickly, but very quickly, let me just pull it up on Desmos and show you. Let me get rid of this stuff. Probably could have saved that actually. 
So we have, I'll say S of X is equal to, I can actually use T's, but I, I tend to stick with X's when it comes to this. Uh, maybe a little too much because there, there shouldn't be an X right there. Uh, pi squared, under functions, you'll see trig, you see cosine. So I grab that, pi x. It modifies the graph every time I put a new term in, a new entry. All right. So that's kind of cool. Division 15 over pi squared. All right, now if I want this to be equal to 100, I can just do a quick y equals 100. Oop, that's an 11 for whatever reason. I can zoom out, so just uh, roll it out, or I can just kind of scroll along, click, click again. Click to indicate that there's a point there. You know, if you kind of hover over it, it'll, it'll highlight it. But if you want to lock it in, then click it a second time so that gray goes to black and you'll have it. Right, so it's a good resource, Desmos.